Okay, hey guys. Um, so today we've got Renelux College versus St Ignatius College, Geelong. Um, now we've got two very different team comps here as well. We, so what I would call a pick team comp over here. So you've got your engage with your Orn and your Hecarim, um, and you've got your pick potential really. So after they engage, you've got your pick potential with the amount of heart alt um, and damage from him as well. Um, we do have the jinx traps and um, damage as well. So, but we've got to think about as well the fact that this team comp here isn't going to be really outputting any kind of true damage um, and things like that until after 25, kind of 30 minutes. Um, whereas we've got the kind of early game CC tanky um, team fight team comp over here for St. Nation's College Geelong. So it's basically a team comp built around Ezreal. So as you can see, you've got the tanks here with Galio, Trogath and Skarna. Um, and I can't see any point where any of the Renelius College team comp is going to be able to make it through those three champions and get onto the Ezreal, who's got an E, who's got Janna ult as well. So um, got to make sure really focusing on team comps. And when they pick that Ezreal, you've got to either think about, all right, we need to be pick, picking tanks that aren't, are going to be able to withstand the Ezreal poke or picking a, um, an assassin that's going to be able to jump on that Ezreal and one-shot him. So you need to think about that. I mean, the um, Mauzahar here, he does have his ult. He does have the damage late game to deal with that Ezreal. But the issue that you're going to face is that if I was playing Ezreal or if most other people playing Ezreal, they're not going to get close enough for you to be able to ult at all because the ult range of Malzahar ultimate is not very big, all right? So it's, it's way under the Ezreal Q range um, and it's right on the Ezreal auto range. So you need to make sure you're thinking about that and especially when picking that. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to skip to 6 minutes 20. Um, this is one of the really, really big team fights that takes place in this game and... Yeah, it's really instrumental in Renelius College and how they kind of lose the footing in this game and give up. By no means does it make them lose, but by all means does it give the other team the kind of momentum to go through and win. Um, they could come back, but you understand what I mean. That it's it's really tough from there. So having a look here, so we've got some good good pinging coming out from Mount High in the mid there. Um, but if we pause this now, so just have a look here. We've got. Bot lane, I've slowed down at half speed, but I've bot lane's getting cleared um, by the Janna and the Ezreal going together, which is really good, so there's no way they're going to get picked. Um, we've got very silly fight up here. There's no point fighting as tanks. Doesn't matter, doesn't kind of matter. I mean, now Trogath's ahead, it's going to be a lot tougher for the Orn, but I wouldn't fight in the first place. There's no point. I mean, you're both tanks, you're waiting for that kind of mid late game team fight stage where you can use your CC and be really valuable that way. So. That, that's what we need to be focusing on top lane. Um, but you can see here, fully watered up bot lane. So there's no no gank potential there. You kind of need to make sure you're focusing on um, getting getting that vision down for um, the bot lane. So that none of these guys have, as you can see here, Mauzahar's got a control ward in his inventory. Neither of these guys have any control wards because they just put them down. Um, Jinx has two. Does she have two wards activate, able to be activated? I'm not sure how I see that. Um, but yeah, oh no, she doesn't. So she still doesn't have any wars she can put down. So she'll be staying super, super safe. So at the moment, though, they're both about half health, um, which isn't fantastic. Um, but by all means, not too bad. And we've got Hecarim coming down here for a gank. Um, so if we speed this up, again, speed up the one speed. So he's sitting in that bush. He doesn't know he's sitting on a ward, obviously, but he's, si he's sitting in there for a good 10 seconds. So he's sitting in there from. Um, was it uh, 7.15 to 7.25 um, and then he makes the move and that's given Skarna and Galio time to start heading down the bot lane as well as as soon as that Hecarim engage comes Cho'Gath TPs who actually wasn't in Vision of Orn so Orn couldn't give the knowledge that that was coming um, Galio ults in and it's a really really good four man dive there five man dive sorry um, so whole team comes down and you know that's going to translate to all three of those dying, but also it translates to this tower as well as the dragon. If we look up here as well, we need Orn pushing up, getting that tower pressure down. We also need Mouth pushing back because this tower is gone. There's no point either of them coming down, so they're better off pushing up. Getting, they could possibly get, I don't know why Orn's sitting back there, um, but they could be getting these towers. So about half health because they know all of them are down there. They know 
if they're doing appropriate macro play, you know they're all going to go to dragon afterwards. Luckily enough, it's a cloud drake, which isn't isn't you know, by all means it's not good to miss a dragon, but out of all the dragons you could miss, cloud drake's probably a good one to do that. Um, so yeah, they, they're going to get that. It does mean that um, Bard and Jinx. So Jinx already about half CS of quite close enough to half CS of Ezreal. So she's going to have to be sitting back here. Getting, getting this catch-up farm down. Um, I'd probably even be freeze farming for a bit because we can have Bard go mid. And if you've got if you've got Jinx freeze farming way back here with a ward in this bush here and a ward up here, she's pretty safe. I'm, I'd, I'd be pretty confident that she's not going to get ganked and she can actually catch up. So we need that Jinx scaling and getting some damage down for late game. But that was kind of a really, really bad kind of two minutes for an LA's college where they got that five-man dive bot lane. The only way they really could have fix that was so you kind of know something's going on when when all these wards are down so you've got wards here wards here you've had Hecarim sitting in there for 10 seconds that's an, and that's enough time for Skun to come from Fountain all the way back down bot lane um, it's enough time for Trogath the TP um, and Galio to start rotating mid with with good communication from mid telling him it's coming that's when you should be disengaged straight away not so Hecarim, as you can see, he's, he's gone in. Um, Jinx is still moving forward. So if we play this at half speed, Jinx is still moving forward, still moving forward. Got to make sure if this was watered and, and a ward up here, any kind of vision, and this would not have happened. Because if all three, think about it, if all three of them survived, missed this knock up, didn't, didn't cop this. So if they had, well, they would have been a lot more healthy for this dive, they might have got two of them and that might have allowed Mauser Hutter then come down. But at the moment, he's completely zoned up here and can't go in at all. So that's the only thing that you need to get that vision down and that's what's going to stop these four-man bot, um, bot lane dives. So what you could be thinking as well, though, is for next game, thinking, all right, so what if we're completely warded up? What if we've got Orn up the top lane ready for a dive? Because he's level six. Yeah, so he's level six. He could be TPing in, getting that one ultimate, um, and then you're getting that bard stunt, and then it's basically done. So you need to be thinking next time, all right, could we be the ones doing this four or five man bot lane dive, getting the tower, getting the dragon, doing that kind of really good rotation stuff from mid as well. So that's really important to be thinking about. Um, now, if we skip to the next really, really crucial one, so if we go from 14 minutes... So we've kind of moved through. Um, Ronello's College has got a couple of really good picks. So um, they went for a really silly dive over in mid lane with Jana and Ezreal trying to dive the Jinx by herself, um, not realising that Bard was just around the corner and he got a really good ult off. Um, so Jinx got a really good kill against Ezreal there. Um, we also had another good pick. So this is the kind of Mauser pick that I was talking about over here. So if we go to that one, where there's not much the Janna's going to be able to do. So you can see, nicely watered, so you've got a ward up here, so you can see who's coming. Um, Janna doing the right thing, trying to get a deep ward in, chucking the scry on, so getting rid of that, but Malzar's in here waiting, and he's able to get the full combo off. Um, really good help there by Bard as well, getting the stun. So yeah, as you can see, got that, that kind of pick potential is what I was talking about earlier. Um, but as you can see, you've got the two to five, um, kills, bit of a gold lead on the St. Ignatius College side by 3,000, 4,000 almost. Um, so we've got that happening. We've got here, we've got kind of the ARAM kind of moving through here. We've got a good good engage by the Hecker. I'm probably engaging on the wrong person though because you know that Ezreal's got that escape. Probably should have engaged on the Janna. Not much of an escape there. Um, big Bardock. I don't know why. Well, so if we have a look here, have a look back in the mid lane. So Bard's at half health now. Um, and so he walks, walking up and down, that's fine. Um, but being at half health with an Ezreal takes a Q, so now he's at a third health. And then walks up again. I don't know why he walks up again, because that he was already getting shredded by the Ezreal. Um, and so with Bard dying, though, then Hecarim's decided to come in in a 4v3. So you can see... Jinx just got picked by the Skana. All right, Skana ult. Was able to flash over, put her traps down. Completely in the safe. And then after that, we had Hecarim engaging in. So we watch that one more time. We've just got here. So there we go. So Skana coming up here. Um, their bot side's watered, as well as Skana being in the bush. So they get the good pick on Bard. Um, Skana just flashes over. There's nothing Jinx could have done about it. A flash ult from Skana. There's nothing you can do. Um, 
But then still, realising that it's a 4v3, um, and then for ulti in like that, a little bit silly from Hecarim. Got to make sure, if you know Jinx has Flash, who can now go down and get some of that farm I was talking about and hopefully scale. Um, Got to make sure you're not going in like that, especially when they have Flash, they can get out. A um, little bit, really bad call here by Mauzahar as well. Um, sticking around, I mean, there's no way a Mauzahar at 14 minutes in the game is going to be able to stop a four-man dive with Galio, um, Skana, and everyone else, especially with Janna healing and shield and stuff. No way, so you just got to make sure. Like we talked about last video, when you've got three or four people there and you're the only one there, just let the tower go. There's no point giving him extra gold by getting a kill on you at the same time because the tower is going to go regardless. So you need to make sure you check that. And Bart also doing the same thing, walking in afterwards. Um, 3v1 situation. I know the tower's there, but I mean, towers don't stop damage from happening. So that's something people need to start realizing. And again, with the really good macro play here as well. So we've got, saying those gods, they've, they've got all those kills. They've got the tower. They've pushed up. Um, with that pick, uh, Hecarim's now de-pushed, so it's, it's up and down in the middle. Um, face checking, I think, was pretty, pretty, pretty spicy there from Hecarim. So, um, got to be careful with no wards or anything. Wait for the Jinx, wait for the Orn, wait for the um, Bard to come back. Oh no, Bard died, I think. Yeah, Bard was already dead, so he's coming back from Fountain. Um, but you still had the Jinx, you had the Orn. Um, you know that they're going to do the right thing macro-wise and do the rotation around to um, get that Rift Herald, so got to make sure you're careful. For some reason, I mean, there's, I realise there's no no vision there, um, but the Orn ulti just on the Cho'Gath was not very good at all. I mean, you've got Bard coming in from the side, he's your main CC source, so if you Orn ulted that way, he could have got some, with, that, with the Brittle on him from the ultimate, that would have been some seriously good um, CC there that would have allowed Jinx to get a damage, because at the moment she's getting completely zoned by this Galio um, here. So you've got to be really careful of that. Got, now, that's what I was talking about at the start as well. The Jinx just has no protection at all. So you had Bard coming in from the side. You had Mauzahar in the middle, which is fine because he's getting his ult off. He's getting his um, dot on, all those different things. But um, got to make sure you're really careful. Jinx playing with fire here. Got to make sure she goes back. That kind of health. Any any auto attack's going to take her out. Um, Hecarim again. So doing, doing okay. He's, he's getting that um, XP back here, but not going too close. So probably going a little bit too close now, but... I'm only saying that because, as you can see, there is no wards here. Oh, there's a ward up here from Ronello's College team, but no wards down on this side. Oh, there was. Cool. All right, so they did have knowledge that there weren't any enemy champions there, and that's fine. Okay? Um, that's the one thing I've been worried about lately is because we seem to be playing with this real disregard for vision um, and not making sure that we've got proper vision everywhere and are able to know where everyone is, and that's why we're getting these silly kind of... Um, um, rotations getting done on us, so lucky the vision coming down there, so top's covered, but there's really silly rotations from the enemy that shouldn't be happening, and if we had vision up, we'd see it coming, be able to ping, and maybe even counter it, so that's what we need to be looking at as well, getting those really good counters down, so when you see this Cho'Gath alone, that's really good time to be going in on it, you know that Skarna's there, and that's fine, because there was three, I don't know why Jinx has left and walked around, um, but you can see there was it was a 3v2 situation. Um, you had vision on everyone else, and you know that Galio had just gone back because he was down to a third health. Um, he's just TP'd in to make it 3v3. Um, we understand what I mean. So when you had that kind of pick out there on the Cho'Gath and the Skarnet, that's when you go in, you go in hard um, and get those picks. So and see there. So the rest of this is kind of elementary a little bit because they've got such a lead now. It's 413, which isn't humongous. It's a 10k gold lead. Um, but it's one of those things you need to be focusing on the kind of the beginning stuff. These two team fights kind of set them up to win, and you really, really want to make sure all through vision, all through communication, that all these things could have been stopped um, and really, really improved. I'm not, I'm not saying we could have won if we stopped those two team fights, but I tell you what, it would have made it a lot easier. They wouldn't have got as many objectives and things like that. So they're doing really well with the macro play side of it. So making sure that if they are communicating, are doing the team plays getting those objectives afterwards to make it all worth it. So that's what I were, that's where I want us to be happening. I want us to get be getting those wards down, getting those rotations happening, um, and making sure we get some of these dives, some of these team plays, just making it so that they you're taking objectives, forcing objectives, so there's nothing they can do, and that's really what we need to be getting to. All right, so hopefully this has helped. Hope that it's all been constructive and you really can take away from this and practice in your own time and get some of these rotations and plays happening.